Another minute uh, for anybody who might be trying to call in, and while I also get myself situated. My apologies. No. Hi, Justin Ross and Jack. Hi. I'm sorry to see anything below when you came into the room.
pouring rain out. Guy, uh, can you do the windows? Thank you.
and I think that's it for the logistics. Okay. Uh, and for those of you who are on the call, if you have a question, if you can't hear something, um, just ask in the chat function. Uh, just type in some information, and I will do my best to accommodate uh, for staff. And I know that that's usually the biggest request that we have is to speak up. So all of you who are in the room, I know that you are masked. Um, we will do our best to, to make sure that outdoor voices uh, can be heard. Um, and if we need to just move you forward, we could probably do that if you can remove your mask and, and talk to the board. Um, so this is, sorry for this, all of the crazy logistics. I appreciate that all of you have adhered to them thus far. If you did not sign in when you enter town hall, please make sure that you do that. That's a reminder to my colleagues as well. Um, okay. I think now I'm done with the logistics. I keep looking at town hall to remind me if I've missed something. All right. So uh, I think before we can proceed, I do need a request or I do need a motion um, from a member of the Board of Selectmen to go into a public hearing for the uh, reasons stated on the agenda in front of you. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Rick and I have a second by John. This is a roll call vote to go to public hearing. Joe. Um, I was wondering, this is a continuing and I was the one that said it was continuous. Do we have to take that off the table since it was the continuous? Well, why don't, why don't you have a motion to, to yeah. take it off the table okay. first? Okay. So, Joe, you would like to make. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to uh, rescind uh, the uh, previous order for continuous and put it back on the table. Okay, I have a motion by Joe and Rick. You would actually second it back on August. I'll second. And have a second by Rick. Uh, roll call vote. All in favor? Yes. 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 Thank you. It is a yes from Christine. So that it's unanimous to put it back on the table. Um, I will entertain that motion to go into a public hearing. Make a motion to enter into public hearing. Okay. I have a motion <coughs> by Rick. Um, yes. Okay. Stated on the agenda and. I'll second. John uh, has seconded that motion to go into public hearing. Joe? Yes. Rick? Yes. John? Yes. Jim? Yes. It is a yes from Christine. So we are officially in um, public hearing. Um, to start us off with the public hearing, I just want to remind everyone in the room how we got here. Um, initially, we had a notice sent. Uh, the initial notice was for a meeting. I think it was on August. Well, that's the piece that I'm having. August 11th. August 11th. Um, at that time, thank you. Yep. We issued the letter on July 30th for a Tuesday, August 11th public hearing. At that time, um, it was requested by Mr. Justin Duffy to. Um, have this meeting, have this hearing continued. We all decided that Tuesday, August 25th at 6 p.m. would be uh, an appropriate time um, and would give uh, proper notice and uh, time for Justin, Ron, and Zach um, to get the information that they were looking to provide. So following that meeting on August 12th, we sent out a letter, um, separate letters, one address to Mr. Justin Duby at his Lanesboro address, one to Mr. Ron Duby at his Adams address, and Mr. Zach Duby also to the same address in Adams. The letter stated, Dear Mr. Duby, due to the events outlined and complaints received by the Adams Police Department in 2018 and most recently 2020, in which the Adams Police Department and Adams Animal Control Officer responded to reports of several attacks and biting incidents resulting in physical harm caused by the dog Lucky in your ownership or in your care and custody, the Adams Board of Selectmen, the hearing authority, is hereby requesting your presence at a public hearing in the first floor select board meeting room in Adams Town Hall on Tuesday, August 25th, 2020 at 6 p.m. 
During this hearing, a review shall be made of the complaint and a determination made if Lucky is to be considered a dangerous dog and if remedial action shall be taken or if the dog should be destroyed pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 140, Section 136A, Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 140, Section 157 through 174, and Chapter 14 of the Adams Town Code. You may be represented by legal counsel at this hearing if you so choose. You may present any relevant evidence for the hearing and you may call witnesses. You are hereby required to show cause in writing at this hearing why Lucky should not be deemed a dangerous dog and action should not be taken against you. After said hearing, the select board may order that the dog be destroyed, restrained, muzzled, or otherwise disposed of if it may issue a warning or take no action. <clears throat> Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Town Hall remains closed to the public. However, depending on your comfort level, you are welcome to attend this hearing in person or via Zoom. If you choose to attend in person, please note that you will be asked to sign in upon your arrival and required to wear a mask inside the building, including the meeting room. Hand sanitizer is available and the meeting room will be sanitized prior to the hearing. It will also be important to notify us by 4 p.m. on August 20th if you will be accompanied by legal counsel or another family member. Due to the state's gathering restrictions, we are limited to the number of people who can be in attendance and we need to make necessary accommodations to allow for additional persons to attend this hearing. If you prefer to attend remotely via Zoom, the following is the information for calling in. If you provide us with an email address, we can also email you the Zoom link for your convenience and the Zoom information is listed. Enclosed are copies of the complaints that have been made against you, as well as the ruling from the October 18, 2018 meeting with the Board of Selectmen. Per the October 2018 order, please provide the following documentation prior to August 20, 2020. One, documentation from the veterinarian that Lucky was neutered. Two, documentation of any training to mitigate the aggressive behavior exhibited by Lucky. Three, most up-to-date shot and medication records for Lucky as prescribed by his veterinarian. And four, a certificate of insurance, not less than $100,000 coverage for personal injuries that may be caused by Lucky. This information can be sent via email to cvoice at town.adams.ma.us, mailed to the Board of Selectmen at 8 Park Street, Adams Mass, 01220, or placed in the drop box at the front door to town hall. Please note that Lucky shall be muzzled, restrained on a three-foot leash, and shall be attended and under control at all times, even while in an outdoor enclosure. Failure to comply with this order shall result in further charges. Signed, uh, Christine Hoyt, Chairman of the Adams Board of Selectmen. It was also copied to the uh, full Board of Selectmen, Town Council, and the Adams Police Department. Um, and I believe that the enclosure <clears throat> included the uh, copy of the October 18, 2018 order that was sent following um, that hearing. Um, we did receive uh, the certified mail receipts from East Justin Dupy, Ron Dupy, and Zachary Dupy. Um, I'd like to enter this as Exhibit 1 uh, for tonight's hearing. Oh, the letter, I guess, is Exhibit 1. Thank you. Letters, I should say. Our Exhibit 1 with um, the certified mail receipt as Exhibit 2. <coughs> Uh, with that, um, I do see that Ron, Justin, and Zach are all present. I will ask um, if you are being represented by legal counsel this evening. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will also ask if you have the documentation that was asked of you to provide in advance of tonight's hearing. These were the four items spelled out in the letter. Okay. 
And were you able to obtain the documentation from the veterinarian uh, that Lucky had been neutered? He did not have a copy of that, and that's why it was asked of you in the letter uh, to make sure that that was provided. Um, so, um, also requested was documentation of any training that took place to mitigate the aggressive behavior. Do you have that documentation? Um, and then. Okay. okay, I just wanted to make sure that we weren't missing anything, that you didn't submit something prior to today that maybe we had missed. Uh, so I just want to give you the chance to answer those questions. Um, and since you do not have legal counsel here, I did want to uh, turn things over to town counsel to just once again give you some additional information about your rights uh, in this process. So town counsel, I will turn this to you. Yep. So two weeks ago, uh, when we were here, I, re I told you something, I read you something, and I have to repeat it for tonight. Uh, because there, you're exposed to someone what's called criminal liability. join the Zoom meeting, I can give you the login. I apologize for the delay, just moving some speakers around so that uh, it might help with the sound quality if people are responding. So I did see the notes. Thank you for letting me know that you're having a tough time. Um, and we will make it a little bit uh, more clear when people are responding. Um, but there was a little conversation back and forth. So I, I apologize for those of you who are on the call who were unable to hear. Um, I think we're good, right? <clears throat> I'll continue. I'll move that one closer as well for now. So let me just go through um, kind of how this uh, hearing will will go uh, this evening. And I'm doing my best. If that air conditioner is too loud and you can't hear me, you guys need to let me know that too. Um, I'm trying to use my outdoor voice as best as possible, and I apologize for not making as much eye contact with you, but I do have a lot to, to read here, so um, I'm not being rude intentionally. I just wanted to let you know. <clears throat> so this is a hearing concerning whether the alleged uh, vicious dog located at 32 Greylock Ave in Adams and owned or in the custody of Justin Doopey, Ron Doopey, and Zach Doopey should be destroyed due to several attacks and biting incidents resulting in physical harm pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 140, Section 136A, Massachusetts General Law Chapter 140, Sections 157 through 174, and Chapter 14 of the Adamstown Code, 
or whether other remedial action should be ordered or whether no action should be taken at all. At this hearing, the Adams Police Department, through its chief, will present evidence to the board concerning its investigation. At the conclusion of the testimony of each witness, the dog owner or um, those who have custody of the dog or representatives may ask each witness questions. Upon completion of the chief's case, the chief will rest. Then it will be up to the uh, dog owner or custodians of the dog who will have a right to present evidence and to call any witnesses that may be questioned uh, by the chief. At the end of the owner's case, the board will ask whether the dog owner has any additional evidence, and if not, the dog owner or custodians of the dog will rest. So uh, the police department will go first, followed by uh, the dupies. Each party may introduce documentary or other physical evidence as it deems appropriate, subject to the rules of relevancy. And as you want to um, invite any documentation, just please bring that forward and we will uh, number it accordingly uh, as part of this process. At the conclusion of the hearing, the Board of Selectmen will uh, call for a motion to close the public hearing. It will then deliberate and at the conclusion of deliberations, we'll take a vote and announce what, if any, action it will take. Um, I know that there are a number of people who are here in the room and on the call. Um, if you plan to provide testimony today, I will ask you to please stand at this time uh, and raise your right hand and agree to the following oath. So if you are providing some testimony today, um, thank you very much. You are all in compliance. Um, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth? Thank you very much. Um, to uh, Chief Bacon or somebody uh, from the Dupie family, is there anybody who is on the Zoom call that you recognize as somebody that will be providing testimony on behalf of either side? Okay. Okay. With all of that, are there any questions um, about the process and what is going on at this point? If not, then we will go forward with the process and I will ask uh, Chief Bacon to go ahead and um, present any evidence, introduce witnesses, um, but state your case. It might be best if you might come forward um, that speaker there is going to be closest for people to hear. Okay. Um, and I think that we're okay. And if uh, Joe is wearing a mask, Joe, are you comfortable if the chief removes his mask to speak? Yes, I am. Okay. Thank you very much. Again, okay. Just make sure that you're close enough to that speaker. And if you could. Um, and those of you who are on the call, if you need to um, have him speak up, please let us know. Go ahead, Chief. Thank you. Okay. I think we're here for two reasons. One, to review the order that was uh, established by the Board of Selectmen October 16th of 2018, as well as an incident that happened in July. Well, I'll take you back to July 24th, where I was approached by the Adams Animal Control Officer about an incident that happened at 32 Greylock Avenue. She explained to me that uh, the complainant, William Martishnik, was walking his one and a half year old colleague, uh, Labrador mixed dog named Bear, down the streets, and a brown and white pit bull broke with his lead and attacked and bit the dog until the owner of the, the pit bull came over and subdued the animal. According to the witness who you, you will hear from earlier after I speak, that the pit bull was not muzzled. Our animal control officer followed up on the complaint and identified the pit bull as Lucky, who the Board of Selectmen have already determined the dog as being dangerous. The animal control officer and I talked about the case and felt that after reviewing the information 
that was determined during the October 2018 meeting by the Board of Selectmen that we needed to revisit the case. We needed to revisit all of the parameters that were set forth by the Board to see if they had been achieved and to review the incident on July 23rd. That's why we're here today. As a result of the, the attack on Bear, the owner of Lucky was uh, ordered to quarantine the dog for 10 days, was issued an unlicensed dog citation, was also issued an unvaccinated dog citation, and issued a leash law violation. My testimony right now is introductory as I'm uh, laying down the case uh, before you that you'll hear today the testimony. I have two witnesses today that will, will talk to you and we open any questions. The first I will the first witness will be William Martishnik, who I would call after uh, William would be the animal control officer in town now. Is it, is it appropriate to now call the first witness? Yes. Okay. Unless there are any um, questions. Are there any questions? I'm sorry. <clears throat> From the board. Yes, town council. Yeah, I just want to be sure, uh, Chief, that uh, as part of your procedure to this exhibit, um, the October 2018 as well as the report that were furnished by your officers, sure. the animal control officers. Uh, as, as you go along, I don't want to forget these exhibits uh, because they have to become part of the record. Okay. No, that's that's. I appreciate uh, the guidance, Councilor. I would like to present the first one. That's the police report okay. during the July 23rd incident. So that'll be three. Uh, and secondly, would be the October 16th, 2018 decision and order by the Board of Selectmen to Justin Dukey of all the requirements that he needs to comply with. And that'll be number four. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. 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 Through whatever, do the exhibits one through whatever. Okay. okay. Yep. Squirming under a gas. 
and then um, I was frozen there because I didn't know how to get the camera off my dog because I had known that this dog had prior conditions and um, dangerous animal. So thankfully, the owner came running over shortly behind him and pulled him off my camera. And then after that, I did a quick check on my dog outside, got him right inside of my house, and called the vet. They told me to take him up immediately. So we brought him up. And then they said that thankfully, since my dog is a medium to large dog, the other animal wasn't able to get his teeth pulled around his leg and cause any real damage. So thankfully, the damage to my dog is just superficial. Um, but we brought him home that night from the vet. Um, they said it was just superficial, so we didn't need to um, do anything or give him anything besides just regular antibiotics in case he got something from it. So that was that. William, was the dog that attacked yours, was it on a leash? It looks like it was on a wire leash. I know that because my grandfather, who lives above me, um, has had two wire leashes in the yard that we used in my dog up to it. Oh, so the same type of lead, a couple of feet had snapped off of it, and that's when he took off the dog. Okay. And was the dog that attacked your dog, did it have a muzzle on or did it not have a muzzle on? No muzzle that I saw on. Thank you. And complete with this witness. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. Town Council. So the, the Doopies have a right to ask questions of Mr. Mar Marchesnick before he, he leaves. Yeah. So, uh, do I need to? And the board does as well? I, the board can ask questions as well. If you want to ask the board first, if they have any questions of him, and if the, once that's completed, then ask the Doofies if they have any questions. Okay. Of you. And then I will um, ask the Doofies at the end of uh, the chief um, presentation and, and witnesses if they have any questions of the chief, correct? At the end of the chief's <laughs> presentation, right. Okay. Okay. So, does anyone on the board have any questions for Mr. Matuk? I just have two quick questions. Sure, Joe. Uh, as far as the vet bills, um, did you have to pay them for no, the new baby? Um, okay. He came over right after the dog attack. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What is it? Von Von Doofy came over right away after I had just finished checking out my dog inside when I saw him approaching the front door. So I came over, he checked on the he wanted to check on the dog right away and said that if we have to go to that or end him the receipt because he would cover it and I did and he did cover the other bill. Okay, and my uh, second question is um, you had said that the uh, chain or wire that he was on was snapped. Uh, it's a bigger dog, right? Yes, sir. Do you think that that was uh, since it was snapped that it should have been a larger uh, folding chain than was yes. present. Yes, sir. I think that with my dog is a medium dog. Thankfully, he found me. I put him on the way. I do believe that if he ever wanted to snap off that lead as a 50 pound dog, he'd be able to do it if he ever really needed to. So I think that a dog bigger than him that has had prior conviction should definitely have something more than wire. Okay, thank you. That's all. Okay, Joe. Uh, anyone else on the board have any questions? I do. Uh, first time that you watch a dog, I was with him. Um, regularly, you walk him? Yeah, we walk him all the time. That's kind of area that we don't anymore, obviously, but we used to walk him every day. Has there been any problems in the past? Yeah, I did have a question. Uh, do you have a copy of the vet records? I didn't bring it. I can get it to you. Okay. okay. That might be helpful. Um, other questions from the board? Hearing none, um, does anyone from the Doofy family have any questions for Mr. Martichnik? Well, I want to know. Why? Justin, if you'll come forward, um, and let me see if I can get a speaker for you. Closer? Sorry. Okay. okay. I think I might be as close to this. Can you have them give their name for the record? Sure. Yep, we can do that. 
um, that the doobies also understand what you are okay. entering into exhibit and if they would like to ask any questions okay. or um, have any comments on it then they can do so at the end of your presentation. Okay. So if you could go through each of those items that you mentioned. Um, I just think that that's probably the most fair way to go about it. So this one from this field is from Officer <coughs> David Collins. I'm not sure if that's correct or not, but I'm saying it. Um, he was dispatched with five Baldwin ads for a report of a dog. Upon arrival, he spoke with Will William Murray, who stated he was chased and bit by the dog next door. He stated the dog belonged to 15 Baldwin and his own ground. Murray showed me his left eye, which was scratched and had punctured. He stated this is not the first time the dog had gotten loose and gone after him. Uh, Mr. Curie's wife confirmed this. Both stated the dog is out of control and very aggressive. And then he goes on to let the same that he spoke with the doobie. Um, he advised them of the call and he stated that the dog, they stated the dog had broken free from his collar, um, but wasn't aware the dog had been to be. Um, he stated the dog is a typical rock wild dick.
Just as stated in the adjustment to Adam recently from Pittsfield, DP stated his dog had been vaccinated for rabies about a week and a half ago at Petco in Pittsfield. I advised him to have the quarantine procedure and ACO will speak with him on Tuesday, 8th, 30th. And there are pictures attached to that one. That will be um, town exhibit number seven. <clears throat> so I have a stack of log entries. Do you want me to cover every one of these or would everyone just like to look at them? Uh, if all the log entries are for Is there a way you can summarize that by saying from what date to an, to the end date, what the incident <clears throat> reports were, who they concerned, okay. how many reports okay. you had? So I only had the log entry starting in 2016. Um, the first one was just basically Mr. Tupi had called um, because he wanted to speak to Officer Dean regarding his off -light. I'll just quickly summarize them all. Um, on 8:31:16, Officer Cunningham and myself um, went to Mr. Tupi's residence to do a follow-up. On 9:1:2016, 2016 um, Officer Cunningham and I were out at 32 Greylock Ave to issue citations and violations. On um, 42917, um, our other animal control officer that we had at the time uh, headed to Greylock Ave to follow up. Uh, Officer Cunningham um, detailed to assist him. Um, I guess it was after one of the dog bites, they wanted to have the dog quarantined. So our other animal control officer thought that the dog had to be brought to our town to be quarantined. So the dog was brought to the town and spent the night there. When I came in the next day, I asked why the dog was brought there. He thought that it had to be. So I called the two piece and I said, if you can do this quarantine, the dog is better off at your home. So I did release the dog. On um, 4-32-2017, um, it just shows that I spoke to two piece and the dog was released. Um, on 5 1 2017, uh, Chief Charles spoke with Kevin, a postal supervisor at Adams Post Office, regarding Doofy's dog and the current situation. The supervisor in the carrier will decide on a proper manner of dealing with Kevin's mailman. Um, on 5 1 2017, um, Cable Control Officer Lafayette was Dispatch 232 Red Rock Ave to be able to deliver some conditions in the release statements of the dog. So this one on um, 531 2017, if someone called in, the caller wanted to voice her concerns over the perceived danger of a pit bull that resides at a blue house off of Hathaway Street. The caller was vehicle of the animal as she was walking past the residence with her dog. And she reports the dog was chained, and there was a warning sign posted at the residence. The dog jumped at her. She was monitoring. Her. Her concern. On 6 1 2017, um, uh, Mr. Doopy called the station requesting to speak with me, so I called him back and left a message. 7 15 2017, the party complained to the dog, which had two people previously, um, they were reporting that it was outside barking, then went inside and it was barking on the open window. They were afraid that it was going to jump out the window because they wanted that reported. Uh, 8 11 2008, a CRT driver reports that he was bit in the hand by a dog that resides at 32 Greylock Ave while making his delivery to the address. So that's another incident with a CRT driver. Um, Member Blanchard, go ahead. Um, no, I believe we have another one. Yes, we I thought that she gave you that, but we do have another one. We have another one with another CRG driver on 8 11 2018, so I haven't gotten up to that yet. Okay. Um, so on 8 15, maybe I should do the 8 11 and then go back to the 8 15. So, Officer Cunningham on 8-11-2018 uh, was assigned to a fully marked patrol cruiser number 44 on the details of the North End for patrol. At approximately 1,304 hours, Berkshire County Sheriff's Patrol reported a dog bite at 32 Greylock Ave. Um, this is what Trip Smith Officer is going to say. I'm familiar with this address and unaware of how many previous dogs. 
Um, Officer Dylan Hicks and, and I responded along with Adam's ambulance. Upon my arrival, I observed Officer Hicks and Adam's ambulance personnel rendering aid to a Mr. Ralph Baker. It was learned that Mr. Baker was working with CRT ambulance and had gone to pick up in his duty at 32 Grey Rock. Mr. Baker explained that he went to the door and when the door opened, a large dog hit him on the hand and the foot. Images of the hand have been attached to the While Mr. Baker was being cared for, I spoke to an open window with the homeowner, Ms. Diane Dupree, regarding the lady status of the dog. She stated she was not certain of if the dog was up to date on the shot. She stated the dog wasn't wearing a collar and was not sure if the dog was registered either. Mrs. Dupree stated that the dog belonged to her son, Justin, but he wasn't home at the time. Mrs. Dupree stated the dog lucky is a very pr protective, typical Rottweiler. Mrs. Dupree stated that Mr. Baker had come to the door and the dog got out. It's unclear if the door was open or if Mr. Baker opened the door um, as a part of his assistance to Mrs. Dupree. So that's, and then we back to um, Chief on 815. Chief Charles spoke with Mr. Baker regarding the dog bite incident. He was advised to contact his doctor, his doctor as soon as possible. Uh, due to the dog's rabies vaccination expiring on January 8th of 2017, and the dog is currently not white. So that is it for that report and the log entry. Okay. Want to present those separately? Yeah. yeah. So the log entry <coughs> will be town exhibit number eight, and then you have the um, police report on this is a bite for the CRT yeah. driver. This is a Mr. Baker? Baker? Yeah. Mr. Baker. So this will be town exhibit number nine. <clears throat> um, I have the tickets um, on 5-1-17. I issued a unvaccinated dog ticket for $50 and an unlicensed dog ticket for $50. On 8 18 I issued a unlicensed dog for $100. And I issued an unvaccinated dog for $100. Now, an unlicensed dog and an unvaccinated dog ticket for some of $50 each. And as I said before, they said that they have not paid. Okay. It's a total of seven tickets. Is that my quick math? I think so. So that'll be town exhibit number 10. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not sure if the board has a copy of um, the issue to order of restraint. Um, 830, 16, actually 429, 17, and 830, 16. On the 830, 16, so that's one of the dog bites. Um, basically giving them an order of what they need to do. Uh, your dog will need to be muzzled at all times when outside of a residence. Dog needs to be on a, a leash no longer than three feet. The dog cannot be left unattended outside at all. The dog must be under your control at all times and this order is in effect until further So then we went back and we revisited this order on 429-17. We just uh, revised the order. This is in addition to previous order that was issued last year. Your property needs to be posted with the mayor's dog and no trespassing signs immediately. Um, these all need to be posted outside of your building. So these could probably work together. Okay. So that'll be county exhibit number 11. Is there anything else? Okay. That's it. Any, I have, I have a go ahead, Chief. Kim, when you were there on the 24th, why did you issue an unvaccinated dog <coughs> citation? The, the dog does not have a certain vaccine. And how did you know that? I asked them. They told me it was open. They haven't been able to get it. Thank you. Okay. Other questions for the animal control officer? I'll open it up to the board first. And Jim, don't let me forget that you're on the call this time. Sorry. Okay. Jim, do you want to go first if you have any questions? I don't have any questions. I don't have any questions at this time. Okay. Sorry about 
that earlier. Anyone else on the board have any questions for the animal control officer? I do, Madam Chair. Okay. Hold on. You, you need a speaker. Go ahead. Just for clarification, um, when we held the last hearing, the board, it was the same board makeup for the Board of Selectmen, the same five of us. And we had, so we've seen a lot of this information. Has anything occurred since the, the hearing that we, uh, that was conducted and the date was October 16th of 2018? Because we went through a lot of data there. A lot of it we're familiar with. Right, yes, we haven't had anything since then. Except for the July test. Okay. So, and one more question maybe to the chief also is that the board um, voted uh, for um, several um, requirements to be put on um, the dog, uh, Lucky, and um, from what I, well, I can't, so how do we, um, Ensure. How do we verify, as a as a community, that the board of selectmen order is um, over time that verification is done that that order is is seen through. There were several items, and from what I've heard so far, several haven't been completed from that hearing we had back in 2018. That's a great question. Yeah, and that should have happened on October 17th. The board uh, the board told the newbies to. Uh, ensure certain things have been taken place or have taken place, and my understanding is that none of that took place and it's contingent to not take place. So that, that would be my answer to you. That would probably be a really good question to do for this. But just to follow up, is again, the select board had approved an order um, with several um, directions uh, for uh, restrictions for the uh, dog. How does the community, what agency, you know, what agency, what, who, who verify, who will verify that those orders have taken place and are being followed? Well, I think with the, with the insurance order, I can go by there and get the dogs outside and make sure it has its muscle on. Um, I don't go there alone right now because of all the incidents, so it's hard to see if the dog has to move on. And if I would say as well, sir, that it was also part of the order that Justin Dupree shall report back to the Board of Selectmen within six months regarding the status of what and compliance with this order. I don't feel like it's there. Okay, thank you. Uh, Member Landry, Member Novak, any questions? For yeah, just one. So I seem to remember last time around. You might need that on your table. It was I kind of thought I had a bigger mouth. I kind of uh, understood it was two dog bites, uh, two persons bed. So now there's four. Do you know of any others? Just uh, the only ones I know of are the Pittsfield with two um, ambulance drivers, Officer D, and the dog. That's the only one thing. Okay. No, I'm going to uh, just have a closing statement. Um, everything seems to be well documented. Uh, so I will uh, ask if Justin, Ron, or Zach had any questions for animal control officer at this time. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to I think in closing, um, the, the laws were very helpful. You know, they were some time ago. They were very helpful with how the community uses the stuff. The Pittsfield report that you have uh, was not available to us or to you during the October 2018 hearing. I commend uh, Kim for doing her due diligence in finding that. It was not easy getting that. She did a tremendous job. We wanted to bring that to your awareness because if we could have back then, we definitely uh, would have presented that to you. I think it's pretty clear um, what has happened. It was clear that what happened on July 23rd. Um, not only in my opinion did the dog violate uh, town code, 
but also violated the order that was enacted by the Board of Selectmen on October 16, 2018. And kind of why we're here today, the last, the last component of that order gives the Board of Selectmen the opportunity to revisit um, the current order in any other situation that may have happened since that order. I have nothing further. Does anyone have any questions of uh, Chief Bacon? Uh, I'll ask the board first if anyone has any questions. Jim, do you have any questions of Chief Bacon? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Chief, if you'll say, um, does anyone from the Doopy family have any questions for Chief Bacon? No. No? Okay. Um, and that will conclude the uh, presentation from the police department. Thank you. At this time, I will ask um, the dog owners or custodians of Lucky uh, to go ahead and present any evidence or call any witnesses. I will ask one at a time. So if there is somebody who would like to start, um, as I believe you're all custodians of, the, of Lucky. Start by saying that the past is the past, I'm not going to say or do will change that. But regarding this most recent incident, it was a complete accident, human error. I removed the model so that he could get water during our walk on that. And I had turned, and as I turned back, he had already snapped the lead, and he was 10 feet in front of me. So I chased around and I grabbed him as quickly as I could. He was still dragging his lead behind him. Um, so I, and uh, for the record, that is um, Zach Jupy who is speaking. Um, and Justin. Well, first of all, so in 2018, right after this, he was neutered. But we have had a lot going on in our life, okay? Our mother's been put sick for years. And the last two years, three years have been the worst. And so we're trying to, you know, take care of her, and we're trying to do all this stuff, and we got him neutered, we got without a muscle all the time, on a three-foot lead, and we, he was just on his rabies, we haven't been able to get his rabies shot because of everything right now, but everything was followed. The life insurance, we can't, or the insurance policy, we can't get a, a receipt for right now because of the COVID thing, so we're, I mean, we are lawyers, we're completely kind of unprepared. We called the lawyer and they told us to come in here and tell what we could, you know, and if we go to the court, they told us to, that would be the best time to get a hold of them. But everything was followed. We did everything that we could. We got, you know, we just muddled, I mean, no, no incident in two years. Right? And the past couple months, I mean, our heads are not in the game right now because my mother passed away. A few months ago. So now, after all this time, taking care of her, we're just, we just, our head's not in the game, right? It's, it's hard to get this stuff done when you have so much on your mind. That's, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Justin. Ron, did you want to address the board? And I'll ask you to come forward and be as close to one of those speakers as possible so yeah. that those. On the call, I can stay with $20,000. I can stay with $20,000. Right? Could you go out and get closer to that, please, and speak? I have paid some fines off. And I just got to find out how I can, you know, film this. Because I have. I haven't paid them all, but I have. I have to do this great because I went to my social security check. Like, I'm the one to make, you know, that's how I live. And your social security. You know, when it comes to Wednesday, I'll pay off that hundred and fifty dollars. But you know, I know that I paid this big joke. And, and I just I gotta find out why. You do whatever we need to do. I mean if we need to get a bit of fence. Wow. We got him also just after this incident, he's now on Prozac. And it has That's kind of put him a lot calmer. We don't know what's gonna actually happen for like a week or two. But he has been a long run but he he's on pet. You know, he's, a, he's great with us. He used to stay with my wife because before she got really, really sick, I worked pretty much full time until I retired. And, you know, we all were working. 
and he was there to take care of her, to help her, and help protect her, you know. I mean, I'm not saying it's right, but the last man who came to the house, he opened up the back door of our house. We have had scientists who moved into the house, testifying, the dog will bite you, do not come in the house, no trespassing. They're at the front door and at the back door. And this man just came in and opened up the door to return something, you know, and he called, knock on the front door, do, do something, you know. I mean, I'm not saying it's right to get it, but, you know, he could have run to anybody else's house and had the dog. He could have got bit too, you know. I mean, it's it just, you know, things that have happened that. I'm not trying to make excuses. No, I'm not trying to make excuses, but, you know, I mean, come on. Can I ask a question? I'm going to so back. I'm going to see if they're okay. done with their uh, okay. statements first, Sorry. and then and then we will turn it over to questions. Is that yeah. okay? Yeah. Thank you, Ron. Did you have anything else you wanted to add? No. Okay. I mean, um, you know, I mean, it's expensive. Everything's expensive. You know, my wife passed away February. have anything else that you wanted to state uh, at this time I can open it up to questions but I do want to just ask one more time if there's anything um, any evidence that you want to provide um, any documentation this would be a good time to do so um, and I'm seeing some heads shaking no okay. Okay. So I'm going to um, I'm going to ask uh, the board members in the room if anyone has any questions of any of the individuals, and then I will go to Jim, who is raising his hand. Jim, I do see you, and I will remember you. So it's, uh, if anyone in the room has any questions of uh, Justin, Zach, or Ron, uh, please go ahead. If Joe, or um, I just have uh, one question. Um, is, did you have this dog since it was a puppy, or okay? Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, uh, first of all, let me say sorry to hear about your voice your passing. Uh, the original award. Thank you. 
Yeah, I just have one question for Justin. Um, you do not live in the town of Adams, um, so who is responsible for the dog? You know, I don't know how often you come to Adams, you're at this residence, but who's... Well, that would have to be me. Yeah, it's a family dog. Right, okay. Not, you know, right. I'm the one who brought him home, that's why it's right. in my name, but it's a family dog, he's been a family dog his entire life. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, Member Bush, do you have any questions? I got a few statements. Um, I have a black lab that's a rescue. He came from North Carolina, went through two hurricanes, was scared to death when he came here. He wouldn't come to us. He was afraid of everything and anything. A year and a half later, this dog is a big baby. He cuddles up to everybody. He shows love to everybody. I believe the Dupree's failed this dog tremendously. They didn't show no love to this dog. It's, it, I, I think it's a travesty. And to say you don't have time to spend with a dog is wrong. You can, you can still restrain this dog. There, there's no excuse for that. Don't have time, you shouldn't own a dog. Jim, I'm gonna reserve it in question time. Uh, Jim, you have any questions? No, I don't. Okay, and, uh, town council uh, does have a question, so I will uh, turn it over to town council. Yeah, you have yeah, I have it. Uh, so my questions relate to the October 20, 2018 order. I just wanted to ask you about each of the things you were ordered to do. Uh, the first, first or the second item mentions that Lucky was neutered. So you said he was neutered. Can you tell me when that happened? Immediately after that incident. So that was sometime like October, early November of 2018, right? And um, the the next item talked about training, and you said that you couldn't do that, you weren't financially able to do that, is that right? Yeah. Okay. The way to really do it is to have him brought somewhere. Okay, I'm just asking about compliance with the order, okay? Um, and now, you did you provide any evidence to the selectmen or to animal control or the Adams police on uh, current shots and medications prescribed by the that since October of 2018. Yep, we got his voice. What, what, what evidence of shots did you get? Okay, so I know I'm just asking you, you understand what I'm asking. I'm asking if you provided evidence of the shot. So when you got his license in what, 2019? Okay, you provided that. Uh, how about his 2020 license? Did you provide anything and in connection with that? You have to provide it to get the license. Okay. And you all updated shot. All right, so you have a 2020 license? No, oh, we're waiting until we can get to the vet. We weren't allowed to go anywhere. Okay. So right now, right now, you don't have anything related to that? No, after um, September 15th, we'll have everything. Okay. And uh, now at the time of this particular incident in July, the order says that Lucky be muzzled, restrained on a three-foot leash, um, and he wasn't muzzled in July, is that right? I stated just a second ago how I removed the muzzle to give him water. So could give him water. And his restraint at that time, was that a three-foot restraint? It was a three-foot wire leash, yeah. And he broke from that, is that right? Yeah, yes. Okay. Now, uh, since October of 2018, did you provide the town with a certificate of insurance as ordered by item number six. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not until September 15th. Well, what about what about 2018 and 2019? Did you provide the town with anything? No. No. Okay, and you didn't report back to the selectmen within six months after the October order. Is that correct? No. Okay. No. All right. I'm on. Uh, Do I need to? Uh, yeah. Does the uh, police department have any questions? Right. You can ask 
Chief, and I, I right. think Ms. Wittig had some Ms. questions. Ms. Wittig, you did have some questions. He kind of covered it. Um, the, I was going to ask about the insurance. It was ordered in 2018. Why wasn't there any insurance provided for it? It's still a financial burden. I'm telling you, we were poor. That's you know, right. That's where we should have revisited with the select one. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have a question. Um, so, and all I got here today was I was just walking with my dog that day, and then I got the phone call to ask for I'm not like coming to do any of these all like teeth and earlier and all that sort of precious. I love animals. I don't know if you have any animals. But by the same token, I don't have a question for you guys because, like you said, it was a complete accident with my dog. I can't believe that. I don't believe that you guys like cut your weeds. Of course. Yeah. I can't believe that. How can you assure me that when my seven-year-old brother is laying in a lawn across the street that the dog's not going to run across the same street that he did to me and the attacking dog? And that well, again, yeah, my dog isn't out there like that ever anymore. That was a random incident. He's on his leash. You can see him. Sure, we walk in with his muzzle up and down the street. He's got a muzzle, a prong yeah. collar, and a short. I just want to make sure we're talking about I've got what I've got. I've been talking about, 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 about looking into getting his friends. So I would say that this was uh, three years, four years, four years, three years, four years, yeah. and your family is out there all the time. Yeah, yeah. over to the yeah. most of your yard. It, it rides a little big wheel. Yeah, they're around every day. That's why I'm making sure that that's also because it's not brown loose for whatever reason. Just a uh, logistical item. Uh, we did have someone just join us. Um, Michael, who just joined us, if you could uh, provide your last name for our attendance record and if you could also um, mute your device because uh, there's a little bit of feedback. Thank you for your last name. Uh, so this is Michael Dolan who's joining us on the call and thank you for um, muting yourself at this time. Other questions uh, from the board? Greg, you had. I have one for uh, Jim. I'll get to you in a moment. Hey, sir, Wick, I'm not familiar with a casket muzzle. I thought muzzles were made so that you could drink through them. I've never used a basket muzzle. The muzzles we have, they're just a nylon, it's basically so we don't get bit. But I'm pretty sure that the vet recommended the basket muzzle, but they also recommended basket muzzle training, I believe. Probably can show them how to let the dog train with the muzzle there's, on. There's no way. It's like a closed fence in okay. front of his mouth. Okay, it's like a whole cup. Okay. And it's just cut. cut. Like, there's no way he can get his tongue through the muzzle. I'm not sure going to use that. I'm going to use my other question for the newbies. You said the dog is on four leg now. What is the cost of keeping the dog on Prozac forever? Prozac itself isn't that expensive. I think it was like thirty-five dollars. And it's two. I think a two-week or a month no, dose. At least a month. Yeah. Checked them out, and then she gave me, you know, all these pills that she gave me. I had told her, Here, here's Prozac. I said, You know, told you the situation. She said, Prozac will help. She put them on immediately. She gave me antibiotics and pain pills for them. And all of that, all of that cost me $225. Okay. The pills themselves are 35 bucks. Okay, now, so, when she gave you the, the pills, looked at his leg, she didn't give him a rabies shot. No, she couldn't. No. So they said that's the emergency visit. They couldn't do rabies shots. She wasn't even going to let us come in. Right. But he needed it. His leg was definitely bothering him from something internal. So she 
took blood and we're waiting on the result from that. But he has a vet appointment set up for September 15th to update him on a shot. That was as soon as one I could get. And I'll need to get our license and a copy of our home on the track. Thank you. Uh, Jim, you had a question? Yeah, I have a question. How often is Lucky taken for a ride just to socialize instead of going from one house to the next and back and forth every day? And has he ever get taken out of the house for a walk to intermingle with people? We walk him daily. I walk him daily. He goes out to uh, New Ashford. New he Ashford. plays on a river. And the river. There's a river there. And there's never anybody there, but you know, we keep on the leash and all. And he loves to play in the water. I don't know where Selectman Bush heard that we said we didn't have time for our dog, but nobody ever yeah, said that. Never, those, those words didn't come out of the mouth. Just said when that happened, we were all working. Right, it's the only thing that close to that. When the incident happened, we were working. Well, I don't like it. It's certainly on the other floor. I don't like that at all. We rescued him, he was five and a half weeks old. He tried to get him. We didn't care if he would be here. You know, he'd say, hey, hey, there ain't no way, you know, just kill my dog. Sorry. Yeah. Um, Jim, you had a question? Yeah, I had a question. Uh, Jim, you had a couple of questions that have uh, been asked um, from the public. Uh, and for anybody else who's on the call, if you have a question, if you could type it into chat, and I will uh, uh, ask the question. Um, so this question is for the, the Dupree family. Uh, there is a just a, a logistical question. If the dog couldn't get into the vet for vaccinations due to COVID, how would the vet able to prescribe uh, Prozac um, for the dog? They were booked up straight through. They called us literally that day, two <clears throat> hours before, and said somebody canceled. So we had an emergency. Not on top of 
getting all the stuff done myself personally and kind of relying on everyone else to do it. So I can also make sure that I'm on top of this myself. Get this done, get the information that you guys need back to you, whatever it is. We got the rabies and everything going to be done on the 15th. We can give that information to you, whatever is needed. There's nothing else um, from the Duby family um, that will conclude uh, your testimony uh, this evening. Um, that will conclude the public hearing, unless there's anything else. I'm oh, sorry, you have the well, I was going to say, because of the day public hearing, if you, you could announce for announcements for anyone on Zoom call, you know, give them a chance to speak other than the, the message box. Yeah, um, we were trying to do that through the message box, um, but was anybody unable to uh, write a message in the chat box that needs to unmute themselves and ask a question at this time? I'm not seeing anyone making a move to unmute themselves. Um, and I don't see anything else in the chat box. Uh, so we did leave that open for about uh, 10 minutes for the public. So I just want to make sure that was the answer time. Um, and I appreciate everyone on the call. Um, So I think there's a question about the process, which we would get into. So um, that's more of a question to the Board of Selectmen. Uh, the statement reads, if the dog doesn't get put down for all these tax advice, what else has to happen? Uh, um, that will conclude the hearing. If there's nothing else to be brought before us, I do need a motion to close the hearing. Um, I was just wondering, um, will we be able to make a commentary? Yes. So okay. uh, once the public second. okay, and then uh, while we're in the motion and second, just once we're at public hearings and we can deliberate as a board, it just closes really. This piece of it where we would get any intel from. So I have a motion and a second. Uh, again, it's a roll call vote with Joe. Yes. Rick. Yes. John? Yes. Jim? Yes. It is a yes from Christine to the unanimous. We have uh, concluded the public hearing and we are now in public session. Um, this is an opportunity for the board to deliberate. Uh, we will need to uh, take a vote and uh, and take action this evening. Please keep in mind there are uh, two items really that uh, the board needs to consider. One, a determination of whether or not Lucky is deemed a dangerous dog uh, as uh, defined by Mass General Law. And the other is to take any remedial action or uh, uh, to uh, destroy. So uh, we have uh, those two items in front of us this evening. It's determination of dangerous dog and action uh, by the board. <clears throat> so with that, I will open it up to the board to deliberate um, if anyone would like to start. And Jim, I will try to keep an eye on you to make sure that um, I see you. Does anyone? Wish to. Well, I, I, I'm not shy. Uh, I'll be in. Uh, so I'm going to move that speaker closer to you, though. Okay. Okay. And then I'll turn the camera so you can give me a moment. My apologies, everyone. Okay. I'm going to the two of you. Okay. Um, uh, to the Duffy family, um, as Rick mentioned, I'm sorry about your personal loss. That is tough. Um, when I look at this case, um, and I'm going to call it a case, it seems like a lot of things were well documented, and a lot of the things that you have told us 
have been kind of innuendos, but I know you're sincere and they make sense to me when I heard what you had to say. Um, the thing that bothers me is the saying, uh, you, can't tr you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And in this case, you had that dog as a rescue dog and got it. Now it's eight or nine years old. So at this time, instead of you can't teach him new tricks, I don't think at this point you can teach him new habits. So I think you're saddled with a dog that is, as you mentioned, one of you said he's really aggressive. Um, a pit bull and a Rottweiler mix have those tendencies, the propensity to be protective type dogs. They're kind of dogs that people have to you know, protect their property and protect their personal well-being. Um, I'd have to also say though that you know, as dog owners, you, you're responsible for that dog. And we've seen and heard many cases of negligence on your part. Now, whether a person comes to your door and opens it without permission, then that's not right on their part. But on the other hand, you should have that dog in an area away from a door or anything because once again, each time this has happened, the dog charged out because he's protected. One thing about a dog that I've always known, a dog's the only thing that loves his master more than he loves himself. Dogs love their masters. They'll do anything for them. They love, they love you more than they love themselves. And they'll give to you as much as you give back to them. And I just fear, though, that this dog, you know, you say it's a family pet, but I think it's living a tormented lifestyle. You know, I know inside your house you're nice to things, but it's aggressive. It's not said that way. I don't know much about antidepressants like Prozac. I know it's given to people to kind of calm them down, and, you know, I don't know... How, how that will work. But, you know, as an individual, I don't think I have the right to get permission to kill anything. That's in my religious uh, stance. I don't have the right to tell anybody that I'm not a judge. Uh, I can't give an edict. I could as a selectman because this is under our purview. But my thinking is, and you're saying that, you know, you're financially strapped. I know I'm in that category, too. Uh, I'm not a well-to-do person. And... I love animals, um, and I don't like to see a dog put down. I just, I, I just can't do that. So my vote will not to put the dog down, but perhaps take it away from your possession, and then you're clear of all the trials and tribulations, the money that have to go. But you know, that's just what I'm thinking, and I'll stop there.
a wish for the man to keep Lucky from being euthanized. Was put forward. You need to do this, this, and this, and this, and we'll be okay. Out of that litter, for the five layers, one maybe two of the others. Only one didn't get them. We don't have them. Only one didn't get them, actually. No picture. They have training. The one of them. You have training. The one that didn't get them. Uh, was bitten. 
Um, it's always my concern that when we make these decisions um, and we, if we add, you know, again, give um, directions um, to, uh, to the Doopy family to, res to restrictions for this dog, it's always my concern of uh, uh, someone coming up, a child coming up, a young person uh, selling tickets for the football program, or a young child wanders into the yard. Um, you know what could happen then? With what, with the evidence that I have heard, it makes me very concerned. Um, so the, the board ha does also have some liability here. Um, the hundred thousand dollars for the homeowners insurance. I don't think that was done, was it? Okay, because I, I think I think we talk, I remember talking about this in 2018, and, and it really is, you know it's not that it, you know it does cost more money, but it's not they a lot asked more. Us for, we asked for a copy, and they asked us for an updated one. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, I'm just uh, just you know concerned, upset that what we had asked for back in 2018, we did not. Uh, it did. Uh, it wasn't seen through. Member Bush, you have. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Dupi and this statement today saying he do anything his power to prevent this again. If you go back to our hearing, the last hearing, the last hearing, if I remember correctly, ended the exact same way. We'll do anything in our power to prevent anything from happening. And I agree with John. What would happen if there was a young child walking up the street? You know, do you really want to have that sitting on your plate, that dog getting a hold of a kid? There's going to be some serious damage done. You know, I mean, they, if they're restraining this dog, he shouldn't be out there like that to start with. You know, like I said before, my black lab, he lost two homes in hurricanes, came here, he was petrified. Year and a half, he's the most loving dog in the world. So if you show it to him, you're going to get it in return. That's all I have. Thank you, Jim. Uh, none of us have entered into this uh, hearing like this. Um, I think that was evident in 2018 when you met with this board. Uh, and again, a couple weeks ago when we met. Um, to talk about what needed to be done for, for today and setting the new hearing date uh, to make sure that we did have time to prepare and to provide any documentation. Uh, I, I do disappointed that the documentation uh, hasn't been provided to our board uh, in two years. But the most compelling uh, thing I heard this evening uh, was actually from William who talked about his seven-year-old uh, brother. Um, and, and that's, that's who I worry about, not necessarily just your brother, but others in the neighborhood uh, who might not be able to uh, fend for themselves if they find themselves in uh, the same situation that they're found in, um, for other animals. So I, um, I, uh, I know that we have to first make a determination this evening uh, as to whether or not Lucky is to be defined and determined as a dangerous dog. So I will uh, ask the board uh, if anyone would like to move on. Anything in that nature? I will just state uh, that. On October 16, 2018, uh, this board did uh, deem uh, Lucky to be a, uh, defined as a dangerous dog. Um, and in speaking with legal counsel today, um, although that vote was taken uh, in 2018, it is something that needs to be determined once again uh, by this board. We support the two. <coughs> Well, you call for a motion. Okay. 
Yes. It is a yes from Christine. Uh, that is unanimous. Um, the next item before the board is uh, any action that needs to be taken by the uh, board of selectmen. Again, in the public hearing notice, um, action uh, to be taken by the board. Uh, to be remedial action, um, no action for the uh, action of euthanizing uh, the dog. Um, do you want to have to close the comments? I'd like to ask town council. Um, what are the options? Uh, we've gone through this a few times. What are the options for the board? I believe there's seven based on state law. Um, and also what was mentioned today that it uh, can be done if the dog is, can you take a dog away? And, you know, we, I think we talked about in 2000, or what, maybe it was, uh, during the um, hearings we've had in the past, it, you know, we take a dog away and it be um, uh, taken away from the owners and taken by someone else um, to uh, try to uh, take care of the dog. Uh, well, let me just answer your last question first. The, that criminal statute that I read in the last paragraph, it says that the dog, once it's deemed dangerous, cannot be given to anybody else. So, you know, one of the options would be to seize and impound the animal. And... Uh, you know, anybody giving the dog away is placed in a very difficult position uh, for that. So I, I can read you seven or so options that are available if you want to hear that. Yes, please. Uh, the first option is that the dog be humanely restrained, uh, provided that he not be chained or tethered to a tree, for example, or an inanimate object. Uh, the second would be the dog be confined to the premises of the keeper of the dog which means being securely confined indoors or confined outdoors in a securely enclosed and locked pen. Third option is that if the dog's removed from the premises, the dog shall be securely and humanely muzzled and restrained with a chain or other tethering device having a minimum tensile strength of 300 pounds and not exceeding three feet. The next item, number four, is the owner or keeper of the dog has to provide insurance, proof of insurance in an amount not less than 100000 Item five is that the owner or keeper of the dog provide uh, evidence to, to the board, uh, including information by which the dog can be identified, not limited to photos, tattooing, and that sort of thing. Item six. Unless the owner or keeper of the dog provides evidence of a vaccination, uh, evidence that a veterinarian is of opinion the dog is unfit for neutering, which doesn't really apply here. Uh, they talk about being, you know, ordered to neuter the dog. And the last uh, option, number seven, is the dog be humanely euthanized. And just by way of reference, the previous six items were the subject of the October 2018 order. And just as another reference point, um, town council is reading from Mass General Law Chapter 140, Section 167, uh, under the section of uh, deeming a dog to be dangerous dog. That is exactly right. I do have a copy of Thank you, Jeff. Goodbye.
Member Landry, did that verify the five minute reset? Which, uh, I'm okay with granting. Five minute recess. Five minute recess. I think it's muted, but I'm not sure. I think it's muted, but I'm not sure. Jim, I can hear you. I couldn't hear you. You're not muted. I can still hear you. Me? Yeah. I was muted. <laughs> I know it showed your thing as a mute, but I could still hear you. Hmm. Just so you would know and not say anything. <laughs> oh, I wasn't going to say anything anyway. Okay. <laughs>
get reset. Um, the board of selectmen meeting is back in session. Hmm. And we'll turn things over to the board and ask for uh, a motion on any action you would like to take with regard to uh, Lucky, who's been deemed a dangerous dog. course they have is if the vote whatever the vote is right. taken by the board they can file once they receive the written order from the board which will probably go out in a day or two they have a right within 10 days to petition the district court in other words the North Adams district court for this area to uh, overturn the selectman's order and then then it's up to Back to conducting and be able to uh, hear us. I'm hoping okay. that Jim was able to still hear us during the time that we lost the internet. Jim, can you confirm that you heard us? I can hear you. Can't see you, but I can hear you. Yep. Yeah, our internet's a little frozen, uh, so uh, apologies for that. But hence the, the phone as our backup plan. Okay, so I have a motion in a second. Um, Jim, did you have any discussion? I didn't see a hand raised, so I just want to make sure that I recognize you if you did have any discussion on this uh, motion before we take a vote. No, I have no questions. Okay. So, uh, hearing no further discussion, this is a roll call vote. Uh, Joe? No. Uh, and I, I, I'd like to give my reasons, as I stated earlier. I. I don't think that, as a Christian, I have the right to take a human or an animal's life. I just can't do it. Uh, Member Blanchard. Yes. Member Duvall. Yes, and as Member Blanchard indicated, this, this is the most typical uh, thing we have to do as a forest selection or something we don't want to do. None of us want to euthanize a dog. Um, we've had to do it, and it's been very painful. Um, and, and not as much as uh, to the owners, of course, but but we've been here before. You know, this is the second time. So, uh, as a dog owner, and a dog lover, I have to vote yes reluctantly. Uh, and myself, uh, member Hoyt, uh, will also vote yes. Uh, the the vote uh, passes. Uh, to order that Lucky be mainly immunized. Uh, excuse me, Justin, if you, if you have a seat so I can uh, tell you. 
Oh, what? Excuse me, Mr. Doobie. I can't understand. I understand that this is difficult. This is not, this is very difficult for all of us in this room. It is. And Mr. Doobie, I'm going to ask you to please stop with the outbreak. As legal counsel has explained to you, you are eligible and able to go ahead and appeal this decision. We will make sure that this is in writing. Just as we did in 2018, we sent you a letter. We will send all three of you a letter to make sure that you all received the letter and that you know what your next step can be. You do have the right to appeal this order within 10 days of receipt of the order in writing. You would need to file an appeal with the clerk of the Northern Berkshire District Court at 111 Holden Street in North Adams, Massachusetts. Legal counselors, is there anything else that I need to uh, communicate to the QP family before they leave. No. I just want to make sure that you understand that you do have that right to appeal and that you will receive this letter um, to, to make sure that you have that information in writing. Will the letter be predated? The letter will be dated um, probably tomorrow. Will we get it? It's, 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 will we get it and the date will be, we'll have two days in? We have 10 days from receiving it. About 10 days from your receipt of it. If it's given to you by certified mail, you'll acknowledge, you'll sign the green card, and uh, you know that would be your proof of 10 days from that date. Number one. Quick question. What do they don't sign for sent, but they refuse to sign for it? Well, if it's a problem where we have that happen, we'll have we'll have to have service made in an alternative means. So I'll talk to the chief about how that can be accomplished. Serve in person, right? If there is nothing else, I will go ahead and call for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, I need a second. Second. Okay. Um, I knew it was reasonable. Call vote, Joe. Yes. Rick? Yes. Scott? Yes. Jim? Yes. Anything else we've seen this uh, meeting is adjourned. I want to thank everybody uh, for your being Thank you, Jill, for being the only moment.